I'm Tom Merritt from Daily Tech News Show. Here are the top five tech from the 1970s that we miss. Ah, the 1970s, big cars and big dreams, gas shortages, inflation, some things were not so different. Everything was avocado colored though. And for those of us who grew up then, a kind of technology that was limited but today is rife with nostalgia. So I had a little ask on Twitter and Mastodon about what we miss from that era, and I think I've narrowed it down to my top five tech we miss from the 1970s. At number five, top loading VCRs. Yes, children, sit back and listen. Before streaming was DVDs, and before DVDs was the video cassette, an actual piece of tape with the movie encoded on it. And you had to put that video cassette in the VCR machine. Now, if you know of VCRs, you probably know front loaders. But in the 1970s, when VCRs were huge and expensive, and there was probably just one shared amongst your entire elementary school, you pressed a button on the top of the machine and a little bay popped up for you to put the cassette in. You then shoved that back down into the machine and began to play that recording of The Sting starring Paul Newman. Coming in at number four, Heath Kits. If you wanted a personal computer in the 1970s, you built it yourself. The Heath Company had made electronic kits for decades, including radios, oscilloscopes, and a whole lot more. And in the 1970s, of course, they started selling microcomputer kits. You got all the parts you needed, your RAM, your ROM, and more, and you learned how the thing worked as you put it together. Up to number three, the RF modulator. Whether you were connecting a Heath kit or a game system or a VCR, you were probably connecting it to the two screws on the back of your TV meant for the antenna. The RF modulator passed through the antenna signal and plugged into your electronic devices and put that signal on either channel 3 or channel 4, depending on a switch you could move on the little black RF modulator box. Sliding in at number two, handheld electronic games. They had small screens that showed little LED dashes, but they could be football, basketball, auto racing, baseball, and more. Whether they were from Coleco or Mattel, they were amazing. At number one, the Atari 2600, Pac-Man, Space Invaders, Frogger, all on your home TV, thanks to that RF modulator. You are no longer limited to little red LED dashes. Just stick the cartridge in, make a selection, and play with the joysticks or even paddle controllers if you wanted to play Breakout. I'm not saying the tech we have today isn't preferable. I'm just saying it is a kick to remember how we did it back then. If you want more great tech news and info of the current day, subscribe to our channel at youtube.com slash dailytechnewsshow and get the podcast at dailytechnewsshow.com. I'll see you there.